Prince Philip, Duke of Edinburgh, was the husband of Queen Elizabeth II. As such, he served as the consort of the British monarch from Elizabeth's accession as Queen on February 6, 1952 until his death in 2021, making him the longest-serving royal consort in history. Philip was born in Greece, into the Greek and Danish royal families, his family was exiled from the country when he was 18 months old. After being educated in France, Germany and the United Kingdom, he joined the Royal Navy in 1939, when he was 18 years old. In July 1939, he began corresponding with the 13-year-old Princess Elizabeth, the elder daughter and heir presumptive of King George VI. Philip had first met her in 1934. During the Second World War, he served with distinction in the British Mediterranean and Pacific fleets. In the summer of 1946, the King granted Philip permission to marry Elizabeth. Before the official announcement of their engagement in July 1947, Philip relinquished his Greek and Danish royal titles and styles, became a naturalized British subject, and adopted his maternal grandparents' surname Mountbatten. He married Elizabeth on November 20, 1947. The day prior to their wedding, the king granted Philip the style His Royal Highness. On the day of their wedding, he was additionally created Duke of Edinburgh, Earl of Marianeth, and Baron Greenwich. Philip left active military service when Elizabeth ascended the throne in 1952, having reached the rank of commander. In 1957, he was created a British prince. Philip had four children with Elizabeth, Charles III, Anne, Princess Royal, Prince Andrew, Duke of York, and Prince Edward, Earl of Wessex and Forfar. In 1960, the Queen issued a British order in council, which declared that her and Philip's descendants who do not bear royal titles or styles may use the surname Mountbatten Windsor which has since also been used by titled members. A sports enthusiast, Philip helped develop the equestrian event of carriage driving. He was a patron, president or member of over 780 organizations, including the World Wide Fund for Nature, and served as chairman of the Duke of Edinburgh's Award, a youth awards program for people aged 14 to 24. Philip is the longest-lived male member of the British royal family. He retired from his royal duties on August 2, 2017, aged 96, having completed 22,219 solo engagements and 5,493 speeches from 1952. Philip died on April 9, 2021 at Windsor Castle, at the age of 99. Early Life and Education Prince Philip of Greece and Denmark was born on the dining room table in Monday Repos, a villa on the Greek island of Corfu, on June 10, 1921. He was the only son and fifth and final child of Prince Andrew of Greece and Denmark and Princess Alice of Battenberg. A member of the House of Glucksburg, the ruling house of Denmark. He was a prince of both Greece and Denmark by virtue of his patrilineal descent from King George I of Greece and King Christian IX of Denmark, he was from birth in the line of succession to both thrones. Philip's four elder sisters were Margarita, Theodora, Cecilie, and Sophie. He was baptized in the Greek Orthodox Rite at St. George's Church in the Old Fortress in Corfu. His godparents were his grandmother Queen Olga of Greece his cousin Crown Prince George of Greece, his uncle Lord Louis Mountbatten, and the mayor of Corfu, Alexandros Kokotos. Shortly after Philip's birth, his maternal grandfather Prince Louis of Battenberg, then known as Louis Mountbatten, Marquess of Milford Haven, died in London. Louis was a naturalized British subject who, after a career in the Royal Navy, had renounced his German titles and adopted the surname Mountbatten an anglicized version of Battenberg during the First World War, owing to anti-German sentiment in the United Kingdom. After visiting London for his grandfather's memorial service, Philip and his mother returned to Greece, 
where Prince Andrew had remained to command a Greek army division embroiled in the Greco-Turkish War. Greece suffered great losses in the war, and the Turks made large gains. Philip's uncle and high commander of the Greek expeditionary force, King Constantine I, was blamed for the defeat and was forced to abdicate on September 27, 1922. The new military government arrested Prince Andrew, along with others. The commanding officer of the army, General Georgios Hatsianestis, and five senior politicians were arrested, tried, and executed in the trial of the six. Prince Andrew's life was also believed to be in danger, and Princess Alice was under surveillance. Finally, in December, a revolutionary court banished Prince Andrew from Greece for life. The British naval vessel HMS Calypso evacuated Andrew's family, with Philip carried to safety in a fruit box. Philip's family went to France, where they settled in the Paris suburb of Saint Cloud in a house lent to them by his wealthy aunt, Princess George of Greece and Denmark. During his time there, Philip was first educated at the Elms an American school in Paris run by Donald Mac Janet, who described Philip as a know-it-all smart a person, but always remarkably polite. In 1930, Philip was sent to the United Kingdom, living with his maternal grandmother, Victoria Mountbatten, Dowager Marchioness of Milford Haven, at Kensington Palace and his uncle, George Mountbatten, second Marquess of Milford Haven, at Linden Manor in Bray, Berkshire. He was then enrolled at Cheam School. Over the next three years, his four sisters married German princes and moved to Germany, his mother was diagnosed with schizophrenia and placed in an asylum, and his father took up residence in Monte Carlo. Philip had little contact with his mother for the remainder of his childhood. In 1933, he was sent to Schule Schloss Salem in Germany which had the advantage of saving school fees, because it was owned by the family of his brother-in-law, Berthold, Margrave of Baden. With the rise of Nazism in Germany, Salem's Jewish founder, Kurt Hahn, fled persecution and founded Gordon's Toon School in Scotland, to which Philip moved after two terms at Salem. In 1937, his sister Cecily, her husband George Donatus, hereditary Grand Duke of Hesse, her two young sons Ludwig and Alexander, her newborn infant, and her mother-in-law, Princess Eleonore of Soames Hohensoms Lich, were killed in an air crash at Ostend. Philip, then 16 years old, attended the funeral in Darmstadt. Both Cecilie and her husband were members of the Nazi party. The following year, his uncle and guardian Lord Milford Haven died of bone marrow cancer. Milford Haven's younger brother Lord Lewis took parental responsibility for Philip for the remainder of his youth. Because Philip left Greece as an infant, he did not speak Greek. In 1992, he said that he could understand a certain amount. Philip stated that he thought of himself as Danish, and his family spoke English, French, and German. Philip was raised as a Greek Orthodox Christian. As a teenager, he was involved with German Protestantism. Known for his charm in his youth, Philip was linked to a number of women, including Osla Benning. Naval and Wartime Service After leaving Gordon's Tune in early 1939, Philip completed a term as a cadet at the Royal Naval College, Dartmouth, then repatriated to Greece, living with his mother in Athens for a month in mid-1939. At the behest of the Greek king, George II, he returned to Britain in September to resume training for the Royal Navy. He graduated from Dartmouth the next year as the best cadet in his course. During the Second World War, he continued to serve in the British forces, while two of his brothers-in-law, Prince Christoph of Hesse and Berthold, Margrave of Baden, fought on the opposing German side. Philip was appointed as a midshipman in January 1940. He spent four months on the battleship HMS Ramel Lies, protecting convoys of the Australian Expeditionary Force in the Indian Ocean, followed by shorter postings on HMS Kent, on HMS Shropshire, 
and in British Ceylon. After the invasion of Greece by Italy in October 1940, he was transferred from the Indian Ocean to the battleship HMS Valiant in the Mediterranean Fleet. On February 1, 1941, Philip was commissioned as a sub lieutenant after a series of courses at Portsmouth, in which he gained the top grade in four out of five sections of the qualifying examination. Among other engagements, he was involved in the Battle of Crete and was mentioned in dispatches for his service during the Battle of Cape Matapan, in which he controlled the battleship's searchlights. He was also awarded the Greek War Cross. In June 1942, he was appointed to the destroyer HMS Wallace, which was involved in convoy escort tasks on the east coast of Britain, as well as the Allied invasion of Sicily. Promotion to lieutenant followed on July 16, 1942. In October of the same year, aged 21, Philip became first lieutenant of HMS Wallace. He was one of the youngest first lieutenants in the Royal Navy. During the invasion of Sicily, in July 1943, as second in command of Wallace, he saved his ship from a night bomber attack. He devised a plan to launch a raft with smoke floats that successfully distracted the bombers, allowing the ship to slip away unnoticed. In 1944, he moved on to the new destroyer, HMS Welp, where he saw service with the British Pacific Fleet in the 27th Destroyer Flotilla. He was present in Tokyo Bay when the instrument of Japanese surrender was signed. Philip returned to the United Kingdom on the Welp in January 1946 and was posted as an instructor at HMS Royal Arthur, the Petty Officers School in Corsham, Wiltshire. Marriage in 1939, King George VI and Queen Elizabeth toured the Royal Naval College, Dartmouth. During the visit, the Queen and Lord Mountbatten asked his nephew Philip to escort the King's two daughters, Elizabeth and Margaret, who were Philip's third cousins through Queen Victoria, and second cousins once removed through King Christian IX of Denmark. Elizabeth fell in love with Philip and they began to exchange letters when she was 13. Eventually, in the summer of 1946, Philip asked the king for his daughter's hand in marriage. The king granted his request, provided that any formal engagement be delayed until Elizabeth's 21st birthday the following April. By March 1947, Philip had abandoned his Greek and Danish royal titles, had adopted the surname Mountbatten from his mother's family, and had become a naturalized British subject. The engagement was announced to the public on July 9, 1947. Though Philip appeared always to have regarded himself as an Anglican, and he had attended Anglican services with his classmates and relations in England and throughout his Royal Navy days, he had been baptized in the Greek Orthodox Church. The Archbishop of Canterbury, Geoffrey Fisher, wanted to regularize Philip's position by officially receiving him into the Church of England, which he did in October 1947. The day before the wedding, King George VI bestowed the style of Royal Highness on Philip, and, on the morning of the wedding, November 20, 1947, he was made the Duke of Edinburgh, Earl of Marianeth, and Baron Greenwich of Greenwich in the County of London. Consequently, being already a Knight of the Garter, between 19 and November 20, 1947, he bore the unusual style Lieutenant His Royal Highness Sir Philip Mountbatten and is so described in the letters patent of November 20, 1947. Philip and Elizabeth were married in a ceremony at Westminster Abbey, recorded and broadcast by BBC Radio to 200 million people around the world. In post-war Britain, it was not acceptable for any of the Duke of Edinburgh's German relations to be invited to the wedding, including Philip's three surviving sisters, all of whom had married German princes. After their marriage, the Duke and Duchess of Edinburgh took up residence at Clarence House. Their first two children were born before Elizabeth succeeded her father as monarch in 1952, Prince Charles in 1948 and Princess Anne in 1950. Their marriage was the longest of any British monarch, 
lasting more than 73 years until Philip's death in April 2021. Concerned by her father's poor health, Elizabeth insisted that Philip give up smoking, which he did, cold turkey, on their wedding day. Philip was introduced to the House of Lords on July 21, 1948, immediately before his uncle Louis Mountbatten, who had been made Earl Mountbatten of Burma. Philip, like his sons Charles and Andrew and other royals, ceased to be members of the House of Lords following the House of Lords Act 1999. He never spoke in the house. After his honeymoon at the Mountbatten family home, Broadlands, Philip returned to the Navy, at first in a desk job at the Admiralty and later on a staff course at the Naval Staff College, Greenwich. From 1949, he was stationed in Malta after being posted as the first lieutenant of the destroyer HMS Checkers, the lead ship of the first destroyer flotilla in the Mediterranean fleet. On July 16, 1950, he was promoted to lieutenant commander and given command of the frigate HMS Magpie. On June 30, 1952, Philip was promoted to commander, though his active naval career had ended in July 1951. With the king in ill health, Princess Elizabeth and the Duke of Edinburgh were both appointed to the Privy Council on November 4, 1951, after a coast to coast tour of Canada. At the end of January 1952, Philip and his wife set out on a tour of the Commonwealth. On February 6, 1952, they were in Kenya when Elizabeth's father died and she became queen. It was Philip who broke the news to Elizabeth at Sagana Lodge, and the royal party immediately returned to the United Kingdom. On December 5, 1952, Philip was initiated into Freemasonry by the Worshipful Master of Navy Lodge No. 2612, honoring a commitment he had made to the late king, who had made it clear that he expected Philip to maintain the tradition of royal patronage of Freemasonry. However, according to one journalist writing in 1983, both Philip's uncle, Lord Mountbatten, and the Queen Mother had unfavorable views of Freemasonry, after his initiation, Philip took no further part in the organization. Although as consort of the Queen, Philip might in time have been made Grand Master of British Freemasonry, the Queen's cousin, Edward, Duke of Kent, assumed that role in 1967. Philip's son Prince Charles apparently never joined Freemasonry. Consort of the Queen Royal House Elizabeth's accession to the throne brought up the question of the name of the royal house, as Elizabeth would typically have taken Philip's last name upon marriage. The Duke's uncle, Earl Mountbatten of Burma, advocated the name House of Mountbatten. Philip suggested House of Edinburgh, after his ducal title. When Queen Mary, Elizabeth's grandmother, heard of this, she informed British Prime Minister Winston Churchill, who later advised the Queen to issue a royal proclamation declaring that the royal house was to remain known as the House of Windsor. Philip privately complained, I am nothing but a bloody amoeba. I am the only man in the country not allowed to give his name to his own children. On February 8, 1960, several years after the death of Queen Mary and the resignation of Churchill as Prime Minister, the Queen issued an order in council declaring that Mountbatten Windsor would be the surname of her and her husband's male line descendants who are not styled as Royal Highness or titled as Prince or Princess. While it seems the Queen had absolutely set her heart on such a change and had it in mind for some time, it occurred only eleven days before the birth of Prince Andrew and only after three months of protracted correspondence between constitutional expert Edward Iwi and Prime Minister Harold Macmillan, who had attempted to refute Iwi's arguments. After she acceded to the throne, the Queen also announced that the Duke was to have place, preeminence and precedence next to her on all occasions. And in all meetings, except where otherwise provided by Act of Parliament, this meant the Duke took precedence over his eldest son, Prince Charles, except, officially, in the British Parliament. In fact, however, 
he attended Parliament only when escorting the Queen for the annual state opening of Parliament, where he walked and sat beside her. Contrary to rumours over the years, the Queen and the Duke were said by insiders to have had a strong relationship throughout their marriage, despite the challenges of Elizabeth's reign. The Queen referred to Prince Philip in a speech on the occasion of her Diamond Jubilee in 2012 as her constant strength and guide. Prince Philip received a parliamentary annuity that served to meet official expenses in carrying out public duties. The annuity was unaffected by the reform of royal finances under the Sovereign Grant Act 2011. Any part of the allowance that was not used to meet official expenditure was liable for tax. In practice, the entire allowance was used to fund his official duties. Supporting the Queen As consort to the Queen, Philip supported his wife in her new duties as sovereign, accompanying her to ceremonies such as the state opening of Parliament in various countries, state dinners, and tours abroad. As chairman of the Coronation Commission, he was the first member of the royal family to fly in a helicopter visiting the troops that were to take part in the ceremony. Philip was not himself crowned in the coronation service, but knelt before Elizabeth, with her hands enclosing his, and swore to be her a liege man of life and limb. In the early 1950s, Philip's sister-in-law, Princess Margaret, considered marrying a divorced older man, Peter Townsend. The press accused Philip of being hostile to the match, to which he replied, I haven't done anything. Philip had not interfered, preferring to stay out of other people's love lives. Eventually, Margaret and Townsend parted. For six months, over 1953-1954, Philip and Elizabeth toured the Commonwealth, as with previous tours, the children were left in Britain. In 1956, the Duke, with Kurt Hahn, founded the Duke of Edinburgh as a ward to give young people a sense of responsibility to themselves and their communities. In the same year, he also established the Commonwealth Study Conferences. From 1956 to 1957, Philip travelled around the world aboard the newly commissioned HMY Britannia, during which he opened the 1956 Summer Olympics in Melbourne and visited the Antarctic becoming the first royal to cross the Antarctic Circle. The Queen and the children remained in the UK. On the return leg of the journey, Philip's private secretary, Mike Parker, was sued for divorce by his wife. As with Townsend, the press still portrayed divorce as a scandal, and eventually, Parker resigned. He later said that the Duke was very supportive and the Queen was wonderful throughout. She regarded divorce as a sadness, not a hanging offence. In a public show of support, the Queen created Parker a commander of the Royal Victorian Order. Further press reports claimed that the Queen and the Duke were drifting apart, which enraged the Duke and dismayed the Queen, who issued a strongly worded denial. On February 22, 1957, she granted her husband the style and title of a Prince of the United Kingdom by letters patent, it was gazetted that he was to be known as His Royal Highness the Prince Philip, Duke of Edinburgh. Philip was appointed to the Queen's Privy Council for Canada on October 14, 1957, taking his oath of allegiance before the Queen in person at her Canadian residence, Rideau Hall. Remarks he made two years later to the Canadian Medical Association on the subject of youth and sport were taken as a suggestion that Canadian children were out of shape. This was at first considered tactless, but Philip was later admired for his encouragement of physical fitness. While in Canada in 1969, Philip spoke about his views on republicanism. It is a complete misconception to imagine that the monarchy exists in the interests of the monarch. It doesn't. It exists in the interests of the people. If at any time any nation decides that the system is unacceptable, then it is up to them to change it. In 1960, Philip attended the National Estetvot of Wales wearing a long green robe, where he was initiated as an honorary ovate by the Archdruid of Wales Edgar Phillips through his bardic name Philip Myrionid, 
to reflect his title of Earl of Marianeth. In 1961, he became the first member of the royal family to be interviewed on television, after he appeared on Panorama to answer questions by Richard Dimbleby about the Commonwealth Technical Training Week, an initiative of which he was patron. Charities and Patronages Philip was patron of some 800 organizations, particularly focused on the environment, industry, sport, and education. His first solo engagement as Duke of Edinburgh was in March 1948, presenting prizes at the boxing finals of the London Federation of Boys Clubs at the Royal Albert Hall. He was president of the National Playing Fields Association for 64 years, from 1947 until his grandson Prince William took over the role in 2013. He was appointed a Fellow of the Royal Society in 1951. In 1952, he became patron of the Industrial Society. In the same year and after his father-in-law's death, he took over the role of the Ranger of Windsor Great Park, overseeing its protection and maintenance. From 1955 to 1957, he was president of the Football Association and served two terms as president of Marylebone Cricket Club with his tenures starting in 1949 and 1974, respectively. In the same decade, he became the first patron of Lord's Taverners, a youth cricket and disability sports charity, for which he organized fundraising events. Between 1959 and 1965 Prince Philip was the president of BAFTA. He helped found the Australian Conservation Foundation in 1963 and the World Wildlife Fund in 1961 and served as the latter's UK president from 1961 to 1982, international president from 1981, and president emeritus from 1996. He was also president of the Zoological Society of London for two decades and was appointed an honorary fellow in 1977. Despite his involvement in initiatives for conserving nature, he was also criticized for practices such as fox hunting and shooting of game birds and the killing of a tiger in India in 1961. He was president of the International Equestrian Federation from 1964 to 1986, and served as Chancellor of the Universities of Cambridge, Edinburgh, Salford and Wales. In 1965, at the suggestion of Prime Minister Harold Wilson, Philip became chair to a scheme set up for awarding industrial innovations, which later became known as the Queen's Awards for Enterprise. In the same year, Philip became president of the Council of Engineering Institutions and in that capacity he assisted with the inception of the Fellowship of Engineering, of which he later became the senior fellow. He also commissioned the Prince Philip Designers Prize and the Prince Philip Medal to recognize designers and engineers with exceptional contributions. In 1970, he was involved with the founding of the Maritime Trust for Restoring and Preserving Historic British Ships. In 2017, the British Heart Foundation thanked Prince Philip for being its patron for 55 years, during which time, in addition to organizing fundraisers, he supported the creation of nine BHF-funded centers of excellence. He was an honorary fellow of St. Edmunds College, Cambridge. Charles and Diana At the beginning of 1981, Philip wrote to his son Charles, counseling him to make up his mind to either propose to Lady Diana Spencer or break off their courtship. Charles felt pressured by his father to make a decision and did so proposing to Diana in February. They married five months later. By 1992, the marriage of the Prince and Princess of Wales had broken down. The Queen and Philip hosted a meeting between Charles and Diana, trying to effect a reconciliation, but without success. Philip wrote to Diana, expressing his disappointment at both Charles's and her extramarital affairs and asking her to examine both his and her behavior from the other's point of view. She found the letters hard to take but nevertheless appreciated that he was acting with good intent. Charles and Diana later separated and were divorced in 1996. 
A year after the divorce, Diana was killed in a car crash in Paris on August 31, 1997. At the time, Philip was on holiday at Balmoral with the extended royal family. In their grief, Diana's two sons, Princes William and Harry, wanted to attend church, and so their grandparents took them that morning. For five days, Elizabeth and Philip shielded their grandsons from the ensuing press interest by keeping them at Balmoral, where they could grieve in private. The royal family's seclusion caused public dismay, but the public mood changed after a live broadcast made by the Queen on September 5. Uncertain as to whether they should walk behind her coffin during the funeral procession, Diana's sons hesitated. Philip told William, If you don't walk, I think you'll regret it later. If I walk, will you walk with me? On the day of the funeral, Philip, William, Harry, Charles, and Diana's brother, Earl Spencer, walked through London behind her beer. Over the next few years, Mohammed Al Fade, whose son Dodi Fade was also killed in the crash, claimed that Prince Philip had ordered the death of Diana and that the accident was staged. The inquest into Diana's death concluded in 2008 that there was no evidence of a conspiracy. Longevity In April 2009, Philip became the longest-serving British royal consort. He became the oldest ever male British royal in February 2013 and the third longest-lived member of the British royal family in April 2019. Personally, he was not enthused about living an extremely long life, remarking in a 2000 interview that he could not imagine anything worse and had no desire whatsoever to become a centenarian, saying bits of me are falling off already. In 2008, Philip was admitted to King Edward VII's hospital, London, for a chest infection, he walked into the hospital unaided, recovered quickly, and was discharged three days later. After the Evening Standard reported that Philip had prostate cancer, Buckingham Palace which usually refuses to comment on health rumors denied the story and the paper retracted it. In June 2011, in an interview marking his 90th birthday, Philip said that he would now slow down and reduce his duties, stating that he had done bit. His wife, the Queen, gave him the title Lord High Admiral for his 90th birthday. While staying at Sandringham House, the royal residence in Norfolk, on December 23, 2011, the Duke suffered chest pains and was taken to the cardiothoracic unit at Papworth Hospital, Cambridgeshire, where he underwent successful coronary angioplasty and stenting. He was discharged on 27 December. On June 4, 2012, during the celebrations in honour of his wife's Diamond Jubilee, Philip was taken from Windsor Castle to King Edward VII's hospital suffering from a bladder infection. He was discharged from hospital on June 9. After a recurrence of infection in August 2012, while staying at Balmoral Castle, he was admitted to Aberdeen Royal Infirmary for five nights as a precautionary measure. In June 2013, Philip was admitted to the London Clinic for an exploratory operation on his abdomen, spending 11 days in hospital. On May 21, 2014, the prince appeared in public with a bandage on his right hand after a minor procedure was performed in Buckingham Palace the preceding day. Tony Abbott's surprise 2015 decision to make Philip a Knight of the Order of Australia was widely criticised in the country and contributed to Abbott's ouster as its Prime Minister. In June 2017, Philip was taken from Windsor to London and admitted to King Edward VII's hospital after being diagnosed with an infection. He spent two nights in the hospital and was unable to attend the state opening of Parliament and Royal Ascot. Final Years and Retirement Prince Philip retired from his royal duties on August 2, 2017, meeting Royal Marines in his final solo public engagement, aged 96. Since 1952, he had completed 22,219 solo engagements.
Prime Minister Theresa May thanked him for a remarkable lifetime of service. On November 20, 2017, he celebrated his 70th wedding anniversary with the Queen, which made her the first British monarch to celebrate a platinum wedding anniversary. On April 3, 2018, Philip was admitted to King Edward VII's hospital for a planned hip replacement, which took place the next day. This came after the Duke missed the annual Maundy and Easter Sunday services. On April 12, his daughter, Princess Anne, spent about 50 minutes in the hospital and afterwards said her father was on good form. He was discharged the following day. On May 19, six weeks later, he attended the wedding of his grandson Prince Harry to Meghan Markle and was able to walk with the Queen unaided. That October, he accompanied the Queen to the wedding of their granddaughter Princess Eugenie to Jack Brooks Bank with the Telegraph reporting that Philip works on a wake-up-and-see-how-I-feel basis when deciding whether to attend an event or not. On January 17, 2019, 97-year-old Philip was involved in a car crash as his car pulled out onto a main road near the Sandringham estate. An official statement said he was uninjured. An eyewitness who came to the prince's aid described having to wipe blood off his hands. The driver and a passenger of the other car were injured and taken to hospital. Philip attended hospital the next morning as a precaution. He apologized, and three weeks later voluntarily surrendered his driving license. On February 14, the Crown Prosecution Service announced that prosecuting Philip would not be in the public interest. The Duke was still allowed to drive around private estates, and was seen behind the wheel in the grounds of Windsor Castle in April 2019. From 20 to December 24, 2019, Philip stayed at King Edward VII's hospital and received treatment for a pre existing condition, in a visit described by Buckingham Palace as a precautionary measure. He had not been seen in public since attending Lady Gabriella Kingston's wedding in May 2019. A photo of Philip with the Queen as they isolated at Windsor Castle during the COVID-19 pandemic was released ahead of his 99th birthday in June 2020. In July 2020, he stepped down as Colonel-in-Chief of the Rifles, a position he had held since 2007. He was succeeded by the Duchess of Cornwall. On January 9, 2021, Philip and the Queen were vaccinated against COVID-19 by a household doctor at Windsor Castle. On February 16, 2021, Philip was admitted to King Edward VII's hospital as a precautionary measure after feeling unwell. He was visited by Prince Charles on February 20. On February 23, it was confirmed by Buckingham Palace that Philip was responding to treatment for an infection. On March 1, 2021, Philip was transferred by ambulance to St. Bartholomew's Hospital to continue treatment for an infection, and additionally to undergo testing and observation relating to a pre-existing heart condition. He underwent a successful procedure for his heart condition on March 3 and was transferred back to King Edward VII's Hospital on March 5. He was discharged on March 16 and returned to Windsor Castle. Death. Philip died of old age on the morning of April 9, 2021 at Windsor Castle, at the age of 99. He was the longest-serving royal consort in world history. The Queen, who was reportedly at her husband's bedside when he died, described his death as having left a huge void in her life. The palace said Philip died peacefully, which was confirmed by his daughter-in-law, the Countess of Wessex and Forfar who told the press, it was so gentle. It was just like somebody took him by the hand and off he went. His death led to the commencement of Operation Fourth Bridge, the plan for publicly announcing his death and organizing his funeral. The usual public ceremonial could not take place because of the regulations for the COVID-19 pandemic which restricted the number of mourners to 30. It was later reported in the press that the Queen had rejected a government offer to relax the rules. 
The funeral took place on April 17, 2021 at St. George's Chapel, Windsor Castle, and he was temporarily interred alongside 25 other coffins, including George III in the Royal Vault inside St. George's. Representatives of countries around the world sent condolences to the royal family upon his death. As is precedent for senior members of the royal family, Philip's last will and testament will be sealed for at least 90 years according to a high court ruling, which deemed it necessary to protect the dignity and standing of the Queen. This led to speculation that the will might contain material harmful to the reputation of the royal family. The order was made by the President of the Family Division after a private hearing in July 2021, who said that he had neither seen the will nor been informed of any of its contents. In January 2022, the Guardian challenged the judge's decision to exclude the press from that hearing, arguing that the judge had erred by failing to consider any lesser interference with open justice than a private hearing, and the newspaper was granted leave to appeal. In July 2022, the Court of Appeal dismissed the newspaper's arguments, stating that alerting the press to the fact the hearing on an application to seal the will was taking place could potentially cause the media storm that was feared. The court added that a perceived lack of transparency might be a matter of legitimate public debate, but the allow wills and their values to be concealed from the public gaze in some cases. A service of thanksgiving for his life took place at Westminster Abbey on March 29, 2022 with the Queen, foreign royalty, and politicians in attendance. The bodies of Prince Philip and the Queen were interred in the King George VI Memorial Chapel at St. George's on the evening of September 19, 2022, at the conclusion of the state funeral of Queen Elizabeth II. Legacy Interests Philip played polo until 1971, when he started to compete in carriage driving, a sport which he helped to expand. The early rule book was drafted under his supervision. He was also a keen yachtsman and struck up a friendship in 1949 with boat designer and sailing enthusiast Uffa Fox, in Cowes. Philip and the Queen regularly attended Cowes Week in HMY Britannia. Philip's first airborne flying lesson took place in 1952, and by his 70th birthday he had accrued 5,150 pilot hours. He was presented with Royal Air Force wings in 1953, helicopter wings with the Royal Navy in 1956, and his private pilot's license in 1959. After 44 years as a pilot, he retired in August 1997 with 5,986 hours spent in 59 different aircraft. In April 2014, it was reported that an old British Path newsreel film had been discovered of Philip's 1962 two-month flying tour of South America. Filmed sitting alongside Philip at the aircraft's controls was his co-pilot Captain Peter Middleton, the grandfather of the Duke's granddaughter-in-law, Catherine. In 1959, he flew solo in a Drew in Turbulent, becoming the first and, as of April 2021, the only member of the royal family to have flown a single-seat aircraft. He painted with oils and collected artworks, including contemporary cartoons, which hang at Buckingham Palace, Windsor Castle, Sandringham House and Balmoral Castle. Hugh Casson described Philip's own artwork as exactly what you'd expect, totally direct, no hanging about. Strong colors, vigorous brush strokes. He was patron of the Royal Society of Arts from 1952 until 2011. He was fascinated by cartoons about the monarchy and the royal family and was a patron of the Cartoon Museum. Personality and Image Philip's down-to-earth manner was attested to by a White House butler, who recalled that, on a visit in 1976, Philip engaged him and a fellow butler in a conversation and poured them drinks. As well as a reputation for bluntness and plain speaking, Philip was noted for occasionally making observations and jokes that have been construed as either funny, or as gaffes, awkward, politically incorrect, or even offensive, 
but sometimes perceived as stereotypical of someone of his age and background. In an address to the General Dental Council in 1960, he jokingly coined a new word for his blunders, Don Topidalogy is the science of opening your mouth and putting your foot in it, a science which I have practiced for a good many years. Later in life, he suggested his comments may have contributed to the perception that he was a cantankerous old sod. During a state visit to China in 1986, in a private conversation with British students from Xi'an's Northwest University, Philip joked, If you stay here much longer, you'll go slit eyed. The British press reported on the remark as indicative of racial intolerance, but the Chinese authorities were reportedly unconcerned. Chinese students studying in the UK, an official explained, were often told in jest not to stay away too long, lest they go round-eyed. His comment had no effect on Sino-British relations, but it shaped his own reputation. Philip also made comments on the eating habits of Cantonese people, stating, if it has four legs and is not a chair, has wings and is not an airplane, or swims and is not a submarine, the Cantonese will eat it. In Australia he asked an indigenous Australian entrepreneur, do you still throw spears at each other? In 2011, the historian David Starkey described him as a kind of H.R.H. Victor Meldrew. For example, in May 1999, British newspapers accused Philip of insulting deaf children at a pop concert in Wales by saying, no wonder you are deaf listening to this row. Later, Philip wrote, the story is largely invention. It so happens that my mother was quite seriously deaf and I have been patron of the Royal National Institute for the Deaf for ages, so it's hardly likely that I would do any such thing. When he and the Queen met Stephen Menery, an army cadet blinded by a real IRA bomb, and the Queen inquired how much sight he retained, Philip quipped, not a lot, judging by the tie he's wearing. Menery later said, I think he just tries to put people at ease by trying to make a joke. I certainly didn't take any offense. Philip's comparison of prostitutes and wives was also perceived as offensive after he reportedly stated, I don't think a prostitute is more moral than a wife, but they are doing the same thing. Centenary To mark Prince Philip's centenary, the Royal Collection Trust held an exhibition at Windsor Castle and the Palace of Holyrood House. Titled Prince Philip, A Celebration, it showcased around 150 personal items related to him, including his wedding card, wedding menu, midshipman's logbook from 1940-41, chair of estate, and the coronation robes and coronet that he wore for his wife's coronation in 1953. George Alexis Weymouth's portrait of the Duke in the ruins of the castle after the fire of 1992 formed part of a focus on Philip's involvement with the subsequent restoration. The Royal Horticultural Society also marked his centenary by breeding a new rose in his honour. Created by British rose breeder Harkness Roses, it was christened the Duke of Edinburgh Rose. The Queen, patron of the Royal Horticultural Society, was given the deep pink commemorative rose in honor of her husband, and she remarked that it looks lovely. A Duke of Edinburgh rose has since been planted in the mixed rose border of Windsor Castle's East Terrace Garden, where Philip played a major role in the garden's design. In September 2021, the Royal National Lifeboat Institution honored Philip by naming their new state of the art lifeboat Duke of Edinburgh. The tribute was originally planned to mark his 100th birthday. In the same month, a documentary originally planned for his centenary was broadcast on BBC One under the title Prince Philip, the royal family remembers, with contributions from his children, son and daughters-in-law, and seven of his grandchildren. Portrayals Philip has been portrayed by several actors, including Stuart Granger, Christopher Lee, David Threlfall, James Cromwell and Finn Elliott, Matt Smith. Tobias Menzies, and Jonathan Price. Prince Philip appears as a fictional character in Neville Shute's novel In the Wet, Paul Gallico's novel Mrs. Eris Goes to Moscow, Tom Clancy's novel Patriot Games, 
and Sue Townsend's novel The Queen and I. In John Gardner's 1964 novel The Liquidator, subsequently filmed, the story concludes after the central character, Boise Oaks, is set up by a double agent to make a staged but unsuccessful assassination attempt on the Duke of Edinburgh when the latter visits an RAF base. Books Philip authored a number of books. Four words to Titles, Styles, Honors, and Arms Philip held many titles throughout his life. Originally holding the title and style of a prince of Greece and Denmark, Philip abandoned these royal titles before he married and was thereafter created a British duke, among other noble titles. The Queen formally issued letters patent in 1957 making Philip a British prince. When addressing the Duke of Edinburgh, as with any male member of the royal family except the monarch, the rules of etiquette were to address him the first time as Your Royal Highness, and thereafter as Sir. Honours and Honorary Military Appointments Philip was awarded medals from Britain, France, and Greece for his service during World War II, as well as ones commemorating the coronation of George VI and Elizabeth II and the silver, gold, and diamond jubilees of Elizabeth. He was appointed by George VI to the Order of the Garter on November 19, 1947, the eve of his wedding. Since then, Philip received 17 different appointments and decorations in the Commonwealth and 48 from foreign states. The inhabitants of some villages on the island of Tana, Vanuatu, worship Prince Philip as a god-like spiritual figure, the Icelanders possess portraits of the Duke and hold feasts on his birthday. Upon his wife's accession to the throne in 1952, the Duke was appointed Admiral of the Sea Cadet Corps, Colonel-in-Chief of the British Army Cadet Force, and Air Commodore-in-Chief of the Air Training Corps. The following year, he was appointed to the equivalent positions in Canada and made Admiral of the Fleet, Captain General Royal Marines, Field Marshal and Marshal of the Royal Air Force in the United Kingdom. Subsequent military appointments were made in New Zealand and Australia. In 1975, he was appointed Colonel of the Grenadier Guards, a position he handed over to his son Andrew in 2017. On December 16, 2015, he relinquished his role as Honorary Air Commodore-in-Chief and was succeeded by the Duchess of Cambridge as Honorary Air Commandant. To celebrate Philip's 90th birthday, the Queen appointed him Lord High Admiral, as well as to the highest ranks available in all three branches of the Canadian Armed Forces. On their 70th wedding anniversary, November 20, 2017, the Queen appointed her husband Knight Grand Cross of the Royal Victorian Order, making him the first British national. Since his uncle Earl Mountbatten of Burma to be entitled to wear the breast stars of four orders of chivalry in the United Kingdom. Arms Issue Ancestry Both Philip and Queen Elizabeth II were great-great-grandchildren of Queen Victoria, Elizabeth by descent from Victoria's eldest son. King Edward VII, and Philip by descent from Victoria's second daughter, Princess Alice. Both were also descended from King Christian IX of Denmark. Philip was also related to the House of Romanov through all four of his grandparents. His paternal grandmother, Grand Duchess Olga Konstantinovna of Russia, was the granddaughter of Emperor Nicholas I of Russia. His paternal grandfather, George I of Greece, born Prince William of Denmark was a brother of Maria Fyodorovna, wife of Emperor Alexander III. His maternal grandmother, Princess Victoria of Hesse and by Rhine, was a sister of Alexandra Fyodorovna, wife of Emperor Nicholas II, and Elizabeth Fyodorovna, wife of Grand Duke Sergei Alexandrovich of Russia. His maternal grandfather Prince Louis of Battenberg was the nephew of Maria Alexandrovna, who was the wife of Emperor Alexander II. In 1993, scientists were able to confirm the identity of the remains of several members of the Romanov family, more than 70 years after their deaths in 1918, by comparing their mitochondrial DNA to living matrilineal relatives, including Philip. 
Philip, Alexandra Fyodorovna and her children are all descended from Princess Alice, the daughter of Queen Victoria, through a purely female line.